the case of Starship, the goal is um, um, to lower the cost of access to orbit and ultimately to, to Mars and the Moon and, and elsewhere to the point where humanity can actually afford to become a multi-planet species to the point where we can afford to have a permanent base on the Moon and ultimately far exceed the high water mark of Apollo, which was incredible and I think inspiring to all of humanity, everyone. SpaceX has had another successful year in 2022. Falcon 9 flights have increased to at least once a week, and Starlink is now available in every country in the world. The Starship is also nearing completion of its historic test flight, and Starbase Texas has expanded, while Starbase Florida is well underway. Nonetheless, 2023 brings even more exciting developments. SpaceX is no stranger to breaking molds, and experts predict that it will continue to push the boundaries in the next year. The Polaris Dawn mission, which will send a Dragon capsule carrying a crew into the highest Earth orbit ever flown, has our utmost anticipation. It will also use EVA suits developed by SpaceX to do the first commercial spacewalk. The first Starship will launch from Cape Canaveral on the Space Coast, and we'll get to see some incredibly heavy landing attempts using the Megazilla Tower and Chopstick Arms. Starlink will likewise make significant technological advancements with its second generation of satellites. Now, that's a lot of work, even for an ambitious firm like SpaceX to do in a single year. So, let's discuss how they intend to achieve their goal. After more than three years of planning, designing, constructing, testing, bursting, and more construction, we are finally ready to launch the Starship Super Heavy rocket into space. That's the largest, heaviest, and most powerful rocket ever built. And others may have imagined or perhaps designed such a device, but only SpaceX has constructed it. It is a reusable heavy-lift interplanetary freight spacecraft that can take people to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. However, it can't enter Earth's orbit until it leaves the ground. That's no easy achievement, given the ship's massive dimension, load, and complexity. Now, the initial launch is expected to take place within the next month. Even NASA is now predicting that Starship will fly before the end of December 2022. Despite Elon's prediction of late November and our general learning to ignore Elon's timetables, Starbase Texas is ready to go. The Mechazilla Tower has been tested with a Starship and an extremely heavy rocket, proving that its hydraulic chopstick arms can lift and stack the two. Now, SpaceX has spent the past year developing the orbital launch platform that sits atop the rocket booster. This is much more than simply a place to set the rocket down. The launch mount works hard to control the energy unleashed by the engines. This complicated equipment supplies fuel to the booster core spins its 33 Raptor engines and releases the rocket upon liftoff. The specifics of such space trips are yet to be determined, and the Starship's top stage is planned to travel into low Earth orbit, make a few orbits around the planet, and then splash down in the Pacific Ocean somewhere around Hawaii. We have no idea if there will be a harsh splashdown or if we can see an effort at a gentle water landing. SpaceX first tried this with their Falcon 9 landings. They wanted to make sure the booster could gently land on the water's surface before attempting it with the drone ships. Now, the rocket crashed into the ocean and burst on the first try. And if the Starship's heat shield makes it through re-entry, it will likely perform the same thing. But there's nothing to do but wait and see. After putting the spacecraft into orbit, the extremely heavy rocket is expected to immediately return and crash into the ocean not far from Starbase in the Gulf of Mexico. However, SpaceX has now shown off its own alternate strategy. They have kept the option open to trying to return to the launch site with a rocket, hoping that it would land back at the tower and be captured by the chopstick arms. This is incredibly risky for a maiden flight, 
placing the whole Starbase launch pad complex in danger. But surely there must be a first time for everything. What SpaceX is trying to say is that they will make a call based on how well the rocket lands. And if all goes according to plan and they have complete command of the booster's flight, they may attempt to land it. SpaceX Starbase Texas will remain crucial to the company's success in the coming year. A recent film released by the business titled Life at Starbase makes it obvious that the SpaceX team is making this outpost their new home. Starbase located in Texas will very certainly remain the program's primary R&D hub. We also expect the first HLS Lunar Starship prototypes to emerge from the tents and start testing in 2023. We are also closely monitoring SpaceX as they construct their second Starship factory. This one can be found in Cape Canaveral, Florida at the Kennedy Space Center where the Apollo, Space Shuttle, and Artemis were all built and will be where Starship will be launched in the near future. A new Starship launch tower is being constructed at SpaceX Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy Launch Complex 39A, while a new Starship production facility is now under construction nearby. Kennedy's Star Factory will catch up up to SpaceX Boca Chica facility in time. Now, Starship is planning to use its new Florida launch site for all its future missions, including those to the moon and for NASA and Space Force. Now, before we continue, I'd like to thank you for getting this far. And if you want to know more about SpaceX, then make sure to stick till the end. Now, Starship's success will usher in a revolutionary new age for Starlink. SpaceX has been steadily adding to its fleet of over 2,000 satellites in low Earth orbit to provide its satellite broadband service. And thanks to this concentration of resources, Starlink can now offer low latency, high-speed connectivity to the vast majority of the planet. They have expanded their reach to include the poles. Also, we've seen the capacity put to the ultimate test because Starlink is the sole means of communication between opposing forces in the Ukraine conflict. And although 2022 has been an eventful year, what we've seen from Starlink has been little more than a proof of concept trial. The main event hasn't even started yet. The second generation Starlink satellite will be far more powerful and capable of significantly greater speeds and ranges. However, a more powerful and bigger rocket is required to mass deploy these larger and heavier satellites than the Falcon 9. Therefore, the Starship is necessary for Starlink to reach its full potential. Actually, we recently saw the shipment of several Starlink V2 satellites to the Starship factory in Boca Chica. In addition, we are aware that SpaceX has already invented a novel approach to launching the satellites from the Starship's enormous hold. The satellites will be ejected from the spacecraft through an opening in the side and released into orbit. And in 2023, SpaceX will attempt this massive mission. Now, let's have a talk about Polaris Dawn. This commercial crew trip using the Falcon 9 rocket and Crew Dragon capsule is planned for launch as early as March 2023. Jared Isaacman, who you may recall as the man behind the first civilian flight of the Dragon capsule to orbit on Inspiration 4, is both funding and commanding the Polaris mission. Polaris Dawn, which will have Jared returning for it, will carry the Dragon into a higher orbit above the Earth than any previous crewed flight. This will be the furthest orbit around the Earth that has been maintained for any length of time. Now, as they travel, they will pass through the Van Allen Radiation Belt, a region where the solar wind and cosmic rays are concentrated due to the Earth's magnetic field. Understanding the effects of long-term exposure to outer space on the human body is crucial if we send teams to Mars and place humans on the moon for extended periods. The Polaris Dawn crew will take note of their reactions when they go through the highly concentrated radiation zone, and the findings from this study will be groundbreaking. This crew consists of four individuals, and we can't rule out the possibility of their return as the Fantastic Four. 
In addition, the first commercial spacewalk will take place by Polaris Dawn. The crew will emerge from the Dragon capsule at a height of 700 kilometers above Earth or 300 kilometers higher than the maximum altitude of the International Space Station. The new SpaceX EVA suits are being developed specifically for this mission. As I've said, this is crucial because we'll need many more spacesuits if we ever want to establish a human presence on the Moon or Mars. In light of NASA's recent lackluster performance, it's encouraging to see new, promising spacesuit designs emerge. More than that, Polaris Dawn will evaluate Starlink's performance as a deep space communication network. That's only the starting point for the initial Polaris mission, and they plan to push beyond the limits of human space travel on their upcoming mission. It will take at least two years to do the first rudimentary launch and landing of the Starship rocket. It's safe to say that 2023 will be an incredible year, what with the Starship being fully operational and achieving a launch cadence of at least once per month from two launch sites, Starlink expanding and becoming even more competent, and the Polaris program utilizing SpaceX technology to make groundbreaking discoveries in human space travel. So, what do you think of SpaceX plans for 2023? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And while you're at it, make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons as well. Now, since we talk about Elon Musk, if you want to know more, then make sure to click and watch this video right here and enjoy! And that's the end of this video guys, see you next time!